The pandemic is hitting businesses hard, except for Amazon. The American e-commerce giant has doubled its quarterly profit compared to last year. What does Amazon's market dominance mean for us as customers and how does it affect e-commerce in general? Our topic today on Shift. In the midst of the ongoing coronavirus crisis, online shopping has been booming. The reasons appear to be obvious. Many people around the world are avoiding shops and prefer to shop from home. The following products were especially popular during the first weeks of the crisis in Germany. Headsets. Demand saw an increase of more than 900%. That makes sense, as Germans are known to be hardworking and headsets simply make working from home more efficient. Free weights. An increase of 2740% for that little bit of exercise between work calls. Thermometers saw an increase in online demand of close to 3,000%. The current boom in online shopping has especially benefited one company, Amazon. The American financial analyst Tom Ford says, COVID-19 has been Amazon's growth hormone. What does Amazon do so much better than other businesses? That's what we asked the economist Eva Stübner from Cologne. She says it's based on several factors. Amazon takes a different approach from other companies where the customer is 100% the sole focus. And their strategies are consistently geared towards customers and their needs. That's what makes them so successful. Amazon's success is based on several factors. The seemingly never-ending choice. On its website, there are about 300 million products for sale. The price. Many products are really quite cheap and delivery is often cost-free. Availability. Amazon delivers right to your doorstep, and usually the very next day. Claims. Exchanging or returning something is pretty simple. Amazon is becoming increasingly integrated into everyday life. I can listen to my music there, I can watch movies and TV series. There are many, many connecting points. One shortcoming, however, is being increasingly criticized the quality control of products offered by third-party suppliers. With products of counterfeit or poor quality, the company tries to make the sellers responsible, who are not always easy to reach. But despite some bad apples, usually on Amazon, the customer is always right. Sounds great, but what consequences do retailers and producers face when almost everything is bought on Amazon? Today, over 50% of all online product searches start directly on Amazon. This is hitting small and medium-sized businesses especially hard. They are dependent on participating in Amazon's expensive shipping program to remain competitive on the platform. James Thompson created the marketplace for Amazon. Today, he consults other companies on how to successfully sell products there. Does your product show up in organic search results? Does your product have good customer conversion? It all comes back to, do you in fact use Amazon to do your fulfillment? So that's one example where, as a seller, you basically have to accept that if you want to sell on the platform, you're going to have to use the shipping program to, to be relevant. Amazon has also started selling its own products directly on its platform. In 2009, company founder Jeff Bezos started the in-house company Amazon Basics. This brand sells everyday products, often at bargain prices, and the range is constantly growing. Because Amazon has a very long-term perspective, they're prepared to lose a little bit of money here and there on individual sales. What they want is you, the customer, to keep coming back. The Seattle-based company has a clear advantage over others. Amazon's marketplace gives them access to the competition's data. This online data lets Amazon identify best sellers and use that knowledge for advertising their own products. There are also persistent claims that Amazon copies successful products. Stacy Mitchell represents small and medium-sized businesses in their fight against Amazon. There's a company called Rain Design that makes laptop stands. They had done very well on Amazon and great customer reviews. And then lo and behold, they got up one day and Amazon had created an exact knockoff. The Amazon marketplace can cut both ways. It grants companies access to a growing number of potential customers, but also collects huge amounts of data for its own purposes. 
products labeled as bestsellers or the deal of the day are most successful. The same goes for real supermarkets too. For vendors, the so-called buy boxes on Amazon are equally important. They're small check boxes on the website's shopping screen that allow customers to place products directly into their shopping cart. But the algorithm that determines which seller gets a buy box is kept secret. What we do know is that pricing, reviews and distance between product and customer all influence how sellers are ranked. But the most promising key to success is FBA. FBA means fulfillment by Amazon. Vendors that agree to this deal, which essentially means paying more for Amazon services, have higher chances of scoring a buy box. Stacy Mitchell has been monitoring Amazon for 10 years and it's consistently causing her more discomfort. Three critical remarks from her point of view. It's Amazon's marketplace. And the rules of who can sell there, on what terms they can sell, who gets to see their products, how pricing works, are set by Amazon. It would be as though Walmart you know, not only came into your town and opened up a big store, but also bought up all of the commercial real estate. And suddenly, any business that wanted to open competing with Walmart would have to rent from Walmart and, and Walmart could decide whether they got a storefront or not and how much they paid. And, you know, so it's a monopolization that's uh, on another level. What is true is that Amazon actually benefits from counterfeits. Amazon uses that as leverage against suppliers. So we saw this a few years ago um, with the shoe company Birkenstock. They uh, had been complaining to Amazon because there were a lot of counterfeit Birkenstocks on the site and uh, they could not get Amazon to do anything about it. And eventually Amazon said, oh yeah, you have to sell us your full line of shoes on the terms that we want. And then we'll clean up the counterfeits. Those that do find a way um, may find that they're successful for two or three years and they actually begin to build up a bit of a business doing it and they hire people and they think, wow, this really works. But once they sort of get to a certain size, a certain amount of sales, it's as though Amazon kind of notices them at that point and then it starts to get harder. Suddenly there are more fees and it becomes more and more costly and more and more difficult to be successful. The more successful a company is on Amazon, the more expensive it gets for them to use the platform to sell. That sounds like a pretty bad deal for individual sellers. Can we as customers do something about it? Yes, but the alternatives usually require a little work. One example, checking offers directly on manufacturers' websites. Usually that's cheaper than you think and it even might be beneficial for your warranty. There are also platforms that are conscious of climate change and sell products which are free of plastic or make sure to use carbon neutral delivery. Global e-commerce is extremely profitable, which is why other tech giants are now trying to catch up. Google wants to focus on expanding its e-commerce business and is currently testing a new app, ShopLoop. The app shows short clips of influencers presenting products, which can then be directly ordered. Shoploop's target audience is Instagram users. So far, it's mostly been about beauty products. Facebook has just introduced shopping on its platform too. Ink meets paper produces greeting cards. They're part of a growing trend amongst small American companies. The family-run business from Charleston, South Carolina, uses antique printing presses to make the cards and the new online shop on Facebook to sell them. Mark Zuckerberg introduced online shops to Facebook and Instagram during the corona crisis. He says it's to help retailers receive some of the financial losses suffered during the pandemic. This isn't going to make up for all of the uh, lost business, but, but it can help. And for lots of small businesses, uh, during this period, this is the difference between uh, staying afloat or, or going under. Over 160 million small businesses use Facebook's infrastructure to advertise products and services. They use posts to embed links to their products. At first, users had to leave the app and buy products directly on the retailer's websites. But not anymore. Ink Meets Paper is one of just a few small businesses allowed to test the new e-commerce features. Jamie Nadu, the owner, loves it. 
Unlike Amazon, sellers here don't need to rely on an expensive shipping program. Setting up shops is free. No programming skills required. We want people to handwrite words of love. Instagram's audience really um, kind of helped us in telling that story. So as we looked at their e-commerce features that were coming out, um, you know, it was like, wow, this completely reduces the friction of going to a separate website. Once your credit card is registered, you can use it on all apps across the platform. It's convenient and it increases how long users stay on the site. The Institute for Local Self-Reliance fears that Facebook is using this as a backdoor to collect data on consumer behavior. The whole business model is based on data, Stacy Mitchell says. He is using this moment of desperation to position Facebook in that market. Facebook may, in the moment, be offering a little bit of competition for Amazon, another way for small businesses to get to market. But you know, we should remember that Facebook itself is looking, looking to corner the market. Dominating the market is key. Facebook introduced the new shops feature, Amazon is offering an all-inclusive experience, and Apple has been excluding troublesome sellers from the iOS universe. Who can stop the big four? Heads of state as well as small-time online sellers regularly complain about their dominance, but then nothing happens. That might be about to change, though. In the US, home to these tech giants, opposition is growing. The big four tech executives came under strong scrutiny in an antitrust committee hearing in the US House of Representatives. Whether it's through self-preferencing, predatory pricing, or requiring users to buy additional products, the dominant platforms have wielded their power in destructive, harmful ways in order to expand. That's spot on. The bigger question is whether the US will take action, which means working against the interest of big American companies. What do you think? Do companies that dominate the market, like Amazon, need to be broken up? Or is the market self-regulatory? Let us know what you think on Facebook or on DW.com. And if you want to know more about Amazon's founder Jeff Bezos, make sure to check out our YouTube channel. That's it from me. Goodbye and see you next time. Mm -hmm.